Hi everyone and welcome to An Adventure in Coloring with C.L. Aldridge Art. My name is Christine and I am the artist behind eight of your soon-to-be favorite coloring books and today I will be continuing this page uh, which is The Conversation Ring. It is from my book Fantasy Flower Garden. There is a picture of the cover and we will be using Derwent Inktense. If this is your first time here, please hit the like and subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell for notifications so that whenever I post a new video, you will be notified. But before we get started, I wanted to show you my latest hack and here it is. Now don't laugh, they're not dry yet, <clears throat> but I was in my kitchen, and one of the many things that I save for our uh, school system are egg cartons. And I do that because the teachers always need egg gardens, cartons for arts and crafts. And of course, now it's impossible to find a cardboard egg carton. They're all uh, styrofoam. I also save and recycle my plastic milk jugs. I always buy milk in a gallon. The one thing you cannot recycle, you can recycle the bottle part, but not the caps. My invention. I have my six basic watercolors, black, white, green, red, blue, and yellow. These are glued in here. Um, I used double-sided tape, but you could also use a hot glue gun, although I don't know how the styrofoam will react. And then, here's the best part, guys. I have 12 individual little mixing wells. So I can, and this isn't dry, so I'm not gonna touch it, but I could use my brush my watercolor brush, get the color, mix it in here, and it's not in any danger of getting over here. You know what I mean? I'm not in any danger of mixing those two colors together because of the walls. And if I need to take a break, there's a built-in brush holder. If I want to mix a bigger patch, I've got this area over here Although, it, you know, I have this printing. Ideally, that printing would not be there. But, <laughs> and so, until they dry, once they dry, I'll be able to flip it over right side up. But until they're dried, because they're, they're still wet in there, uh, I just put them in there right out of the tube. I'm going to keep it upside down like this. And then I just set this over on my on my shelf. And it didn't cost a thing. The most inexpensive palette that I was able to find, metal one, because I want to, you know, if I'm going to buy a palette, I want a metal one, uh, a travel palette, uh, was $13. So I saved myself $13 with my recycling bin. <laughs> and so I just thought I was pretty clever. Anyway, that's my hack for the day. And we are back. I hope you enjoyed that uh, as much as I had fun doing that. Uh, and also, for those of you who might have uh, not be new to my channel, but who have been following me a while, as you can see, I, I'm uh, starting to use some of the things that I've taught myself to do graphics-wise with my, um, my OBS recording software um, in, you know, creating scenes like the, uh, the one where I was able to show you the book cover while simultaneously talking to you. Uh, at any rate. Um, and, uh, there's another little goodie uh, for you, and um, 
I'll show you a few of them. Here's here's my uh, new favorite. Uh, and it's actually a slideshow, so it will cycle through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, so please, if you are not already following me and would like to, uh, then uh, please feel free to do so. These are the places where you can. Uh, let's see here. What else? Um... Do I have? Oh, we could go back to that if we wanted to. And I should uh, give a shout out to uh, Coloring Bliss um, because it is her channel's uh, use of her graphics and uh, multi camera work and all of that, which sort of inspires me to learn to use software that is given to us free by developers. And uh, my policy on using free items is that I must learn to use them well. And uh, so that is why I have been concentrating on learning how to, to use these things. Um, and that's this is just the recording software. This isn't even the editing software, which I can do magical things with. So um, anyway... Let's get started on coloring. Get you zoomed down here to where you can actually see. Uh, now, I do, in fact, like our little hummingbird quite a bit better uh, now that it's dry. Uh, the I, I think in the uh, the other video um, when we were doing the live stream, everything was still so wet. So it was very difficult to see. Uh, while I'm still not entirely happy with the cap effect of the red use here, uh, I'm going to be able to work with it, I think, in uh, figuring out uh, maybe a little later. I will change it to a uh, maybe add a little blue and see if I can't get it into a purple state. Um, for now, let's go ahead and color the flowers. And to do that, I brought out both a mid vermilion to consider. Uh, mid vermilion is the number 0310. And I'm thinking that it might be a little orange for this particular color palette. Not that I want to keep orange out of it. But I don't think I want to use it for the uh, blossoms. I think I'd rather go with a pink. And I want to leave these blossoms primarily white. And just add a blush of color. Uh, so to do that, I have chosen the thistle, which is Derwent's 0720. And I will use that and just add a little bit of color down here in the bottom. And then we're going to work it up. A little bit. But I also am going to use white. And the white, uh, you know, it seems sort of redundant to put white ink over white paper. But I want to um, tone down that thistle just a little bit. One of the issues that um, many people have with Inktense is, is that the colors are very vibrant. And one of the best ways, I think, to uh, tone that down a little bit is to use your white pencil to effect. And we're going to test it on this one. And I'm not being shy about how much pigment I'm laying down. Uh, 
Let me uh, zoom you down so that you get a better view. And let me focus you in. That's a little better. And we'll go ahead and see if this will actually work. Just trying to check and see if that actually is in focus. And I just broke my own rule. And what I want to do, you want to wet the lightest parts first. And then start wetting your wetter parts or your more colored parts. And that way you can sort of control how much of the pigment actually bleeds out. I want it to be a very faded color. And once again, when working on a paper that is not specifically dedicated to a water uh, use, and this paper is not, just remember to be very gentle with your brushes and your strokes. And you'll avoid peeling the paper. You just simply, you know, don't use the scrubbing stroke, the back and forth like you get used to with alcohol markers, with um, using water mediums on non-water paper. And of course, you know, I, you, those who have followed me for a while know that I use water mediums on create space paper all the time and uh, have never peeled a page yet. So you just have to be gentle and just be sure to let it dry thoroughly between each layer of colors that you add. And you can layer ink tints until the entire page is saturated. But once again, you are dealing with the vibrancy of the, you know, because it's pure ink pigment. And whatever filler they use to make it solid. Obviously something that dissolves in water. You won't really know the effect that you've gotten until, and I'm just dabbing off my brush on this uh, cloth as we go, just taking off ex or extra pigment so that it remains light. You won't really know what you've got until it's completely dry, but once you've used them for a while, you kind of get an idea of what they're going to do. So we are working with the thistle. I'm going to put the vermilion out of my reach because I have been known to accidentally pick up the wrong pencil. Oh no, really? And to those who were here, uh, it is no longer Monday, by the way, or no, no longer Sunday. It is actually Monday. Uh, fairly close to the evening. And no, I was uh, <laughs> I was just being especially silly yesterday. Uh, I get that way when I am coloring animals, especially because for the same reason that uh, my little frog talks to me, uh, when I was drawing him on the page, he actually tells me how to draw him. <laughs> I want it to be, you know, I want these fingers splayed right here on this branch kind of thing. Uh, so I get a little goofy when I'm, when I'm 
coloring animals. Because I imagine that I'm having little conversations with them. <laughs> I'm also going to, before we go any further, after we get these flowers done, I am going to address this bird's angry eyes. It was pointed out to me in yesterday's stream. I'm also going to address the fact that I am not happy with that eye on Mr. Frog. But it was pointed out to me that this bird does not look happy to see Mr. Frog. So we're going to correct that. And we're going to make this a happy bird. And you could correct it too if it makes you unhappy. So after my stream yesterday, uh, we all got to go over to uh, May Brox's channel, and she was using a medium that I have only ever seen um, used either professionally by Dee Dee or um, as backgrounds, and that is pastels not pan pastels, pencil pastels. Now, I did not know that pencil or that pastels came in pencil form. But in fact, they do. And then she had a, um, a tool that is specially made for blending pastels. Uh, it is a silicone, it's made of a very soft silicone. Um, it looks for all the world like a makeup applicator. But what it does is when you use pastel pencils on toothy paper, um, which in this particular case was a multimedia paper, uh, they can be blended into the tooth with these silicone um, it looks like a paintbrush so I guess you'd call it a silicone paintbrush and uh, it was very interesting to watch May do a beautiful skin work uh, and actually she colored the whole thing with um, I believe it was the Faber Castell Pit Pastels uh, and then she also had um, another brand, uh, I want to call it Garibaldi, but that that isn't right. Uh, you'll just have to go to her channel and watch it. Um, Giaconda. Giaconda, I believe, was the other brand, and they just simply... She used that because it had some colors that the uh, Faber-Castell didn't have that she wanted, but they blended together just beautifully. And of course, you know, I'd seen the small sticks of pastels, and I've seen pan pastels, but I'd never seen pencil pastels, and they were fascinating to watch May use. And after May's channel <coughs> stream, excuse me, Sundays are my busy stream day, uh, we went over and watched Belinda, Faithful Girl 1978's uh, channel. And Belinda lives in Australia. And so for her, what is our Sunday afternoon stream is actually her Monday at noon stream because there's just a vast time difference um, between where I am in the United States and even Europe uh, and where she is across the world in Australia. So And she was coloring a picture 
by an artist that I had not heard of, uh, whose name I cannot even venture to pronounce, but uh, it is certainly worth looking at. It was a beautiful mermaid uh, type picture with a flowing tail and lots of uh, gauzy uh, clothing or, you know, uh, yeah. see-through type clothing. And of course, Belinda is a an amazing colorist. She was using Holbein's for that. And I'm not... Let's see here. I don't... I think I'll just add a tiny bit of this thistle down in here. I probably had forgotten to add the white anywhere else, didn't I? Just goes to show it's not really necessary. Oops. Sorry, didn't mean to almost get off screen again. And we'll add a little extra zhuzhing up to these with our second layer. But for right now, not quite certain what I've got going on here when I drew this. Uh, I thought I, oh, there, okay, yes. All right. So that is part of the lower leaf. And this is part of this flower. And then today, I, uh, Excuse me. Had, of course, you know, it's the was bill paying day. So that's what I did this morning. And of course, paying bills is never fun. But, necessary part of life, I guess. You want things like water, <laughs> power to stay on, the internet. Okay. Yeah, now that these are starting to dry, I'm liking the way that they're looking. I always have such fun with these coloring pages, too. And uh, there does come a point in each one where I forget that I am the person that drew it. And it just simply becomes, uh, you know, a, a piece of art to uh, continue you know, to evolve by the time that I draw it and get it ready for publication. It's a completed piece of art until I go to color it and then it's incomplete again. So, or until one of you colors it. And that's really, you know, for the first, because for the first three years, I really didn't color at all. I just, you know, created black and white drawings and then marveled at the way that other people, you know, brought them to life. So the fact that I color it all is your fault. <laughs> it's all you guys' fault. <laughs> I 
actually, I am finding that I'm really enjoying the process of learning uh, to color, learning new mediums, uh, you know, experimenting always. Um, but I think that's in my nature. Fear is not something that I've ever allowed myself to be governed by. I love new adventures and <clears throat> trying new things. Excuse me. It's one of the reasons why I'm looking forward. You know, those watercolors are still not dry. I tested one uh, late last night. I have not tested them yet today. I figured I'd let them dry out. I think they'll probably take about 72 hours to dry out. Okay. Now we'll move to the next part. Okay, now, I never, uh, I never seem to address what I do with the cinders uh, here. And so what I want to do is I want to go with a slightly darker shade. So maybe uh, the deep violet and put a little bit of that here in the center of each one. And I'm only putting it in the very center because I want to come back to it with the next layer. with a yellow or a gold, maybe a, a, the apple green, to just give a little bit of personality to the centers of my flowers. So I'm just going to make these little dots leave the outside white. Now the reason why I don't do the yellow or the green or whatever color that I, I'll end up doing right now is because if I do, these two colors are going to blur together and instead I want them to be completely separate. So I'm going to let that dry, which then makes the ink tense permanent, then come in with the yellow. Now the answer to uh, the eye is the fact that when I drew it, I put the little white highlight right there I left it blank. Um, technically, hummingbirds do have black eyes. Uh, so, I will go ahead and do that in black. And rather than use a um, uh, an ink tense, I think I'm just going to go ahead and use one of my uh, Pigma Microns. And just do the eye in black. I'll just go ahead and take that little dot right out of there. We'll go ahead and put it back. And while I'm at it, I'll just do the pupil of the little frog's eye. So he looks a little more uh, frog-like. And I'll put the white dot back in with a white uniball um, right there. So now I didn't much care for the color that I made the eye. And so I've been looking at tree frogs 
and they do have um, a variety of colors of eyes, many of which are uh, a tree, a green tree frog would be red. Now, I, I do know that I made him look a little bit more like a toad than a, a uh, not, not necessarily a toad, but less like one of the skinny little red-eyed frogs that you very often see. But I'm going to make him red-eyed anyway. Only I used poppy red because it's just a little bit more on the orange side. And notice that I'm just touching the just touching the color. And the reason is is because I just put the uh, Sigma or the Micron ink down there. Uh, now the Micron ink is archival. It shouldn't move. <coughs> But I don't really want to test that theory, uh, this, you know, with the eye. So I just touched the color to make it, okay. Now I will be adding eventually a second layer to Mr. Frog to deepen his colors and uh, make him, you know, do a little more detail work with the shading. But for a first coat, you could just leave that alone. The thing that makes ink tints so wonderful is that it they, they create awesome blends. Once again, the accidents of art. Uh, I'll also be darkening up and defining with another layer of ink tints this branch, uh, you know, making it darker underneath uh, and uh, more defining the light source hitting the edge I'll restore the iridescence or uh, you know use light to uh, to make the bird here iridescent and we will uh, get to all of that in probably the next video I'll probably do one more on this piece this week uh, but we were going to move on to the next thing now when uh, we talked a little bit in the stream about what color are cocoons, I actually went online and looked at a lot of images of cocoons. Uh, many of them, especially butterfly cocoons, look like leaves. Some look like green leaves. Some look like brown leaves. Uh, you know, just sort of hanging off the end of the tree. Uh, and then, especially when they are just about to become the butterfly after they've cooked in the cocoon for a little while and they're just about to come out. The, uh, the cocoon itself becomes transparent and you can actually see the butterfly inside. And I thought that was really cool. Now, obviously, I could probably draw something like that in here but for right now I think we are going to just go with the idea that they are a green uh, you know or a, greens or browns like a brown leaf maybe now one of the things that uh, I did want to talk about is, is that the fact that this side is looking very bland right now as far as colors because if I'm, I've got the you know the the, the leafy and oaky and fern greens here and the you know the the browns here I go with more browns here uh, I'm gonna make up for that with a background so I kind of want these things that are on this side and also it's color balancing because I have a very colorful bird and flowers over here and when I drew this taking you for a ride back up. Of course, I put a bird on the opposite side and a mouse here. So this side also will be highly colored, as will the flowers and the uh, stalks. 
and all of that. But our brown, our mouse, I'm going to do in brown. And of course, our toadstools could also be where I pick up the reds again. So I'm thinking about color balance as I am coloring the, you know, the, the piece. I mean, I guess it would help if I backed off with the camera instead of just keeping, you know, bringing it high. But one of the things that makes a coloring work is balancing the colors. So I've got a little bit of the red here, a little touch of it right there. I'll use a little on this bird's throat, which will pull it down there. And I may use a little bit uh, for one of these uh, toadstools as well. And so that will uh, coordinate my red. Uh, I'll do the same thing with the other colors. You know, this will be a bright blue maybe. Um, the leaves on this one, or the maybe the, the wings will be uh, green this time. They could be red, they could be black, they could be any color, but we'll pick up the greens again in the foliage. Uh, and so you want to balance out where you use your colors, and you always want to go with uh, at least three places. So if you're thinking like a triangle, uh, if you wanted the red here, the red here, you could also do some red maybe in the center down here, or in my case, I'm going to use a little bit of red in four spots. Uh, I'll use this thistle again down here on these uh, to tie that in. So I'm not pulling, I'm using a lot of colors, but I'm also making sure that they are all uh, being used in a balanced way. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. And of course I learned that little tidbit from Dee Dee. <laughs> uh, so these here, uh, and they can be very, very interesting. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing that I did with the uh, Remember the amethyst jewels that I did on the, um, when we did the, uh, the Bohemian Goldwing? I'm going to do that exact same kind of thing. So I want the mustard yellow because I just love that color. No, I don't want the mustard. Yeah, I do want the mustard. I want the amber. And I want a darker brown, but not too dark. So I think I'll go with the, uh, let's check out the swatch. I've never used the matter brown. So let's see what that looks like in the swatch book. Probably a little better focus. Uh, okay, the matter brown is uh, is sort of a reddish brown, and I think that would work. The other one that would work would be maybe the red oxide. Uh, but I've never used the matter brown, so let's go with the matter brown. Beside which, I've already got it out. And we'll zoom back down. And make sure I'm in focus. Uh, 
It always takes me a second to focus because my eyes don't... Uh, I have to make sure that my eyes are actually focused before I push the save button. Um, okay, so I'm going to use the matter brown here on this side, the dark side. And then I'm going to use the, well, actually, maybe I'll put a little bit of it on this side as well. And when I drew this, I had not looked up what real cocoons actually look like and many cocoons are very interestingly shaped and that has more to do with the variety of or the you know the species of butterfly that's in it some that are very cool uh, although I did not draw it this way are uh, they look like chrome. Okay, I'm going to use the amber as a second color. On this side. And, uh, whoops. Okay. And maybe the mustard on this side. Leaving that center white because I want the uh, I want there to be a highlight there along the the center. And I don't want to overwhelm it with color. of the dark up in here. And see how that comes out. Ooh, the moment of truth. Oops, not the brush I want. There's the medium sized brush. So I'm gonna make it uh, wet in the middle I'm just start I don't know why I started with this the, the first one but we'll see what will happen working from the sides sort of toward the middle and all I'm really doing is just tapping some water on so that I can control the, when I made the interior wet like that, it's actually working its way toward each other through the paper, through the wet paper. Not a lot, just a little tiny. 
tiny bit. And then once I get it to there, where it's all wet, then I can maybe start going a little bit back and forth, picking up the brush each stroke as I'm moving, because I remember I don't want to pill the paper by scrubbing on it. So I'm just letting the water do the work. Rewet that. And once again, we'll know what we have when it's dry. Which is one of the things I love about ink tents. It's almost always an, ex uh, an experiment. At least it is for me. Because, you know, you get those accidental blends or, you know, colors that look really cool blended together that you just, you're, and you, you learn from every time you use them what they will do. And, uh, my goodness, I have a lot of things between myself and my, and my little dab it off pad. Let me move that. Okay. So I've really been enjoying this new, or well, it's not a new channel, it's actually been on for quite a long time, but about 20 years ago, a, a lady who knew what she was talking about, because it was her life, built a, uh, or wrote a book, she was chronically ill, is still chronically ill, and uh, but she wrote a book called Living on a Dime, and then has built a sort of a little mini empire around it and she's talking about uh, today's t today's video was what is the secret of not being broke and of course the secret of not being broke is to not live beyond your means which does seem to be the one thing that people um, I mean, people who, who no longer have a choice, uh, such as myself, get it. Um, but a lot of people don't. You know, it's like if you owe, if you have debt, if you have money on that you owe on credit cards, about the last thing in the world that you should be doing is buying a new car or... Um, or, you know, getting your nails done every week or, you know, spending a couple of hundred dollars at the salon that you're putting on the credit card. Uh, because if you do that and you're not, I mean, if you have the means to pay your credit card off every month, then that's great. But otherwise, you're paying that bill plus whatever interest rate you're paying, even if it's zero, uh, it's, you know, it's still money that you owe that goes against your own net worth and uh, and then uh, but I guess the, the, the issue was that they did a, a question and answer and people were saying well you know you don't understand what it's like here in the state where I live things are very expensive and of course you know their, their answer is uh, yes we do understand move <laughs> as in if you can't if the state that you are living in costs so much that you are always broke then find another state to live in I, I, it's easier you know it sounds easier I think oh these are these by the way are turning out magnificently I am, I'm thrilled with this but uh you know, the, the question it then, of course, becomes with what are you willing to give up uh, to be able to pay your bills every month? Are you going, you know, are you willing to give up some of your free time to get a second job? Or are you 
you know, willing to give up that hobby, not coloring, because coloring can be done, coloring can be done on a dime. Um, we don't have to have expensive things to be able to color, but, uh, you know, it, it, and are, you know, are you willing to give up that, uh, that CD, you know, for instance, if you absolutely had to, uh, had, had to pay a bill, you know, what would you be willing to sell? That kind of thing. Would you be willing to sell the, the collection of expensive collect, you know, a few pieces of the expensive collectibles that you've been collecting or, or, uh, would you be willing to give up, you know, going to the, to the, uh, to the restaurant with the gang every Friday night for, uh, you know, drinks and hors d'oeuvres before the weekend or whatever, like we used to do. Have to figure out the things that you're willing to give up. And then, you know, you get to the point where you've given up everything. <laughs> and hopefully you're out of, you're, you're not broke. Because the, 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 I guess the point is, is that you don't have to stay in that state of being. All you have to do is stay that way until you get out of debt. And then you can start adding those things back in. <clears throat> but they were taking a lot of heat because they haven't planned for their retirement. They are, um, now I should say that they are probably in their 40s, probably you know, they're not, I think they're, they're probably 15 years younger than I am. So maybe 45. And, uh, so they're not, you know, they're not putting money away toward retirement. Well, that's because of course they're out of credit card debt. They've, they've been out of credit card debt for years. Um, and, but they live in Colorado, which is very expensive. And so they are putting all the extra money that they earn uh, rather than, you know, than spending it on expensive vacations or whatever every year. They are putting all that extra money toward paying off their house. And Colorado is a very expensive state to live in as far as real estate goes. And um, so let's say that then at the end of I think they said they had another three years, three or four years before it would be paid off completely. And they didn't, you know, you can pay, you could theoretically pay off a, a 30 year or a 15 year mortgage way sooner if you're just willing to put a little extra, um, if you make one extra mortgage payment, just one, the equivalent of one every year, you can actually pay off a 30 year mortgage in 16 years. So, uh, I happen to know that because it was my business to know. Uh, but at any rate, the uh, so that's what they're doing. They're, they're concentrating on putting all their extra money. And then when their house is paid off and they're, say, 48, and they then have another 20 years of uh, working time, every single dollar of the amount that they used to have to pay or a mortgage can then go into a retirement account. Because, I mean, you know, what if they don't live to be, to retire? You know, then there's going to be all that money sitting there for no reason. So, you know, or if they had been paying, you know, they'd have, they'd have paid interest in order to put money away, they'd have had to not pay off their credit cards. So then they'd be paying interest. Paying interest is dumb. I'm sorry. Paying interest is a dumb thing to do. Okay. So now, <laughs> now you're not hearing me lecture you. Uh, uh, the, those will require a little bit of touching up, but I am really kind of happy with the way that they look. Uh, once again, this whole side is a little bit bland. Uh, right now, but it will, uh, it will be judged up.
Okay, I have been away um, replaying the pieces of this. We're at 52 minutes, so I am thinking that I will go ahead and stop this video, post it, and continue on in another. However, um, th through the magic of doing that, uh, these are now dry. I can see that I do want to add a little something to them. So I have the red oxide in my hand that I had thought about using earlier. So I'm thinking that I'm going to add another color uh, to these. And I think that I'm going to take it this way. And not using a lot of pigment, just a little. And just putting it right down here. Kind of in a curved pattern on this lower edge is where it's telling me that it wants to be. Once the paper has been wet, Things go on it really smoothly, which is kind of a nice effect. It's the same with the Prismacolors. When you, um, when you shade with Prismacolors, they go on very, very smoothly. Kind of wet above it so that it's got a little place to run to. And that sort of adds a little visual visual interest to the otherwise sort of dull brown cocoons that our little froggy is waiting for to hatch so he can have his dinner. <laughs> Dining on, we'll, we'll, we'll say that they're moths. They're not as beautiful as, uh, as butterflies, but they're what our little frog is waiting for. How about that? Rather than picturing him eating a beautiful butterfly, We'll picture him eating a brown moth. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Oh, and then uh, the other thing I wanted to uh, oh, there's uh, two two things I wanted to tell you. Do you remember that I did, uh, January's guest artist was uh, Rob Roskam, and uh, we did that beautiful botanical drawing from his first book, uh, Botanica One, Botanica One. And, of course, I had also showed you Botanica Two, um, or given you a link for that, and had mentioned that he was coming out with Botanica 3, which he released earlier, uh, or actually last week, over the weekend. And so Botanica 3 is now available, um, and if you shop at Etsy, it's in, uh, I'm sure that he's got a PDF of it as well, and it is available uh, in his shop, which is Robert's Illustrations. And uh, I will put a link in, uh, or uh, I'll try and pull the links from from the, um, the show that I did and include them down here so that you can uh, go to his Etsy shop 
and get Botanica 3 if you would like. Okay, so that's those. I think that adds a little bit of visual interest. And the other thing I wanted to do while I've got you, before I let you go, is to add in our white Posca dots, our white uh, oops. Well, that was that was not good. Well, fortunately this stuff scratches off. And actually, it just wipes right off if you get it wrong. Just wipe it off and try again. There we go. Oh, I don't seem to be able to get that one, do I? Wipe it off one more time. All right, third time is the charm. Yeah. Not happy with any of those. I'll go with that one right there. I can always take it off later if I decide that I've screwed it up. <laughs> I don't think it, maybe, yeah, maybe it's because I keep putting it on the, the eyelid or the, uh, the pupil. Maybe I should just put it up there in the eye. Why am I having such a difficult time with this one? Maybe it needs to go down here. Maybe that's the problem. All right. That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> That'll do for now. <laughs> All right, so this is where we are on this piece as of right now. Now, I have pulled the colors uh, for the neck part, which is going to be this um, here, and the stem will be Ionian Green 1320, the dark shade, which will be the bottom part of the inside of the blossoms, will be Deep Violet, which is 0760. And the top part, which will be this part up here, up here, will be the fuchsia at 0700. We will do that on part three of this video. Until we meet again, I am Christine Aldridge. I am CL Aldridge Art. Please color something pretty. Thanks. Bye-bye.